Hi all, Flight Sim Dev here. Um, I'm just, I, I get a lot of emails and, and they basically ask me the same questions, how do I make my photo reel? Um, and it's not an easy one to reply to because there are so many things involved um, in making photo reel. Sure, you can download a program called S Builder X, grab the scenery that you want and place that into Flight Sim 10 and yes, you've got photo reel plenty of examples um, like that are around the place but if you want to have an airport that's well mind-boggling uh, well I won't say mind-boggling but if you want an airport that looks like a, the actual airport not just a bit of ugly ground that's just plonked into flight simulator there are no buildings no trees no nothing and you're just going to land on that well if you're not a fussy person you can do that um, there are certain things you're going to need when it comes to making photo reel. Sorry if I'm just looking at a plain screen here. Well, while I'm looking at this plain screen, what I'll do is um, I'll actually load up some photo reel and I'll show you what I mean. It'll take some time. Now, um, you're going to need the SDK because there's a program inside the SDK called Resample and there'll be an SDK for Flight Simulator 10, the Steam Edition, Prepared 3D, etc. And each one of these resamples are for that particular sim. So you can't use, say, the Flight Sim 10 resample for the Steam Edition or uh, Prepared 3D. Um, you can't use a Prepared 3D for Flight Sim 10 and so forth and so on. You're going to need some video editing program. Um, I use Photoshop, but you can use um, GIMP or um, there's other programs out there you can use. That's up to your flavour, up to your taste. You're going to need a system that's able to do photo rule. Um, it's easy to grab it and just, as I said before, plonk it into Flight Simulator. But if you are going to be doing very large um, uh, detailed photo rule, like this one is, uh, you're going to need a lot of memory. Now, I'd recommend any computer that's 3 gig or above, AMD, Intel, doesn't matter, um, Macintosh, Apple, whatever, um, I'd recommend no less than 16 gig of memory, whether it be DDR3, DDR4. Um, you want a video card that's a minimum of 2 gig in memory because you're going to be using that as well. Um, you want to invest a lot of time have a lot of patience and have all the correct programs. Uh, obviously Photoshop's being one of them. Um, you're going to need, as, as I said before, you're going to need the SDK so you can actually compile it. You've got to know a little bit about how to create an INI file. Uh, that's pretty easy if you basically get um, your S Builder X program and when you compile it, it creates a little setup file. Um, not too sure what the extension is I don't use it th these days but um, in that setup file it gives you what your base image is from your base image you then make all your seasons seasons are very easy um, I'll just go through some bases here I won't go into a lot of detail I want to keep this video short if I possibly can and then um, uh, you know you take things out put things in you might want to change the concrete, you might want to add lines to your scenery, you might want to do numbering to your scenery, you've got your night textures as well you have to worry about, the blend, how it looks in Flight Simulator, all the colouring in the different various seasons, and if it's got water, you want a water layer as well. I'm how not all those that. layers are made, uh, there's plenty of tutorials out there for making blends, I'm not going to go into blends here or water layers. Um, things on the airport I mean many people what they do is they use uh, some free programs um, I've got mostly payware but they've got some free programs out there and the free programs put down lines on the scenery now those lines are textures put over a texture and if you've got a line over a line over a line over a line you might have four textures overlapping now that can cause anomalies and what the anomalies are are f lines are flickering with today's graphics cards, I mean, we're looking at, you know, GTXs or ATIs, really high-end ones, um, you know, those that have got the 2 gig and the 4 gig and higher capacities, they are so good on uh, refresh rate these days that 
they can actually render all the layers as one, as separate, in different order. So if you have a situation where you've got a line over a line over a line over a line, say four or five times, uh, which you might have in a complicated uh, international airport, what will happen then is you'll get one line flickering because the graphics card will be undecided which to show first. So will it be the one on top, the one on top of that, the one below it, or the photo reel? So you might get anomalies like uh, the lines are flashing, your scenery is flashing, uh, you'll get random crashes, um, the program will just stop and it'll just go back to the desktop and you'll go, shit, what the, he what the hell happened there? So you'll get things like that. Now, I avoid all of that by having it all in the photo reel. This photo reel, it looks pretty small on the screen here, but uh, you can see you're only seeing 5% <laughs> of the actual photo reel. Now, this is quite high quality photo reel. And what you do in the photo reel is you take away things that you don't want. So when you build the models, and I'm not going to go into models now, I build all my own models, but when you go into models, um, the models are going to add frames as well. Now, in the case of this particular scenery, I decided I wanted my own concrete because I wanted to cover up the concrete. Now, the concrete is just a layer that you've created and it just covers up things like the aircraft and the taxiways and so forth because the AFCAD will actually control the taxiways. Uh, that's another program you need to either buy or, or get the free version of. Then if you want things like car parks, say you want to get rid of all the cars in here, well if you get rid of the cars you're going to get rid of the lines as well, so you then want to have your car parks. So I put all my own lines in. Uh, you want to get rid of things that are covering the roads like you might want to get rid of say that tree there in I don't know how it works in other programs uh, but in GIMP uh, sorry in Photoshop I use the cloning tool you find a patch of road that's roughly the same you just uh, use this cloning tool and then you just clone out what you don't want and you just keep doing this until what you have is removed okay so you just go through the process of just cloning this away, you know, and that that's going to be good enough, right? Uh, you just, uh, just bring this up here a little bit, and then you just move this around, just like that, right? So you you clone these areas out. In that case, I'm not. Now the reason you want memory is so you can do what I just did there: is go back um, in Photoshop. If you go up to the preferences up here, uh, where are they? They're in here somewhere. Uh, preferences, here we go. Uh, you want memory handling, you want to go to your memory handling or your performance. Uh, that will open eventually. It's just that it's working with. There we go. Now, in the, in the case, well, in the case of my system, firstly, I'm running 32 gigabytes of DDR3. I haven't got a, a fancy big one. You don't want any of the scratch disks to be on any other hard drive except the hard drive that you choose. Now, I haven't got anything listed here because I don't use a scratch disk, okay? I've allocated Photoshop roughly 20 gigabytes of memory just f for... Uh, the history states. Now, you might make a mistake that's 15 steps backwards and you want to delete that step. Well, unless you've got at least 50 history states, you can get away with 30, you can get away with 10 if you're very accurate, but I use 50 history states, which I think is the maximum. I oh, know you can go further, but you need a lot of memory if you want to go further. So, 50 is what I use. Your case level is 428, your tile size. Right, so you want to set it up as tall and thin, default, and big and fat. Okay, so 20 gigabyte of my memory is allocated just for Photoshop. Then I've got also, I think it's two gig of my video card, which is a four gig video card. I've got two gig of that allocated as well. You can see you've got graphics processor and you've got your advanced here, and you go through all of that. Once you've got all of that, you can then do a lot. You can zoom in, you can zoom out, zoom out. You don't get, you don't lose focus and so forth. You once you've got your photo reel in, inside um, Photoshop, GIMP, whoever, whichever, you then want to add all the stuff 
that you want to add to it and anything else um, like custom runways and so forth is controlled by the AFCAD. That way you've only got very, very minimal overlaps. You can use lots and lots and lots of models that are all low in poly uh, and you still gain your frame rate. There's so much scenery out there, they've just put, they've just packed so much into the photo reel that a high-end system like a, a GTX 1080 or something like that is getting 15 frames. <laughs> now, if that's happening, then it's the scenery that is actually causing the error. Here I have the numbers, and all these numbers are actually in the photo reel. And when it's saved as a layer, they're saved. When it comes to the night textures, you can see the light that's illuminating here where the, you've got poles here that have got light stacks on them and the numbers or the, the um, these numbers are illuminated from the photo reel. So the photo reel is actually illuminated. You can see the road is all illuminated here and you might want to put in light poles, double light poles, single light poles that have got effects on there and the effect looks like it's highlighting the road but in fact it's the photo photo reel that's actually doing it so you want you know areas like this roundabouts and entrance gates if you put your entrance gates in here and boom gates or whatever you want that pretty well lit up so you make that a little bit brighter same with this one here you can see it's a little bit brighter down here and then the rest of it's just this dull opaque sort of coloring that goes through it and if you want to put car park lights in then you might want to take this out as well so that's that's what you do with your night and you can see all the street lights over there so you've got your numbering all your numbering this is a military airport so it's not going to have gates all your numbering is inside the photo reel and it pretty much follows what the original did obviously you you have to set up your your photo reel not 100 percent accurate to the original because anomalies do come in you might have two aircraft that decide to taxi backwards at the same time uh, or it'll take the shortest path so if I followed this for instance you'll have this plane here which will go down it'll it'll follow this path along here right but it may not it may do something weird like it'll drive forward turn right here and then turn right down here and then drive over the top of this aircraft if there's one there and then go down this way and if you've got crash turned on, that'll cause a crash and the simulator will crash. Most people have crash turned off. So you make you make your taxiways close, but in such a way that um, it works in the in the flight sim. So that's so how you basically the concrete. Do that. I've done it, designed it in such a way where my lines, I mean all my lines, the all the lines that I'm referring to here are these lines here. So you've got your border between you know the the boundary and 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 the apron so these are all your lines now lines take a while to put in and i mean lots of time to put in um if you're really good at photoshop and i'm not i won't say i'm the best at photoshop but if you're really good at photoshop you'll probably get all these lines done in a few hours in in my case it's taken a few weeks <laughs> Uh, because I'm a bit fussy so I, I put things in I grey out the things that I don't want so the taxiways I grey out in flight sim I'll show it here I show you what this looks like in flight simulator and you must excuse me I've got a bit of a, a, a bit I've got a lot of a cold actually so you've got your lines in there and all the numbers are illuminated from the night you can see they're all illuminated there and if you see the night texture by itself that's basically how it's been done like that and it's just well, it's just been taken out, and these things have all got the, num the numbers in there. Okay, so that's all your numbering. And then once your background's in, you can see all the numbers. And they come up that clear, just as it is here. It comes up in uh, Flight Simulator just the same way. Okay, uh, concrete I've put in, so I'll get rid of the night. The concrete I've put in myself, that covers most of the buildings, and then you put your own buildings in. Uh, when it comes to doing uh, your seasons, all you do is you basically grab a polygon tool here and you want to follow the edge of the road. So you go like this and you follow the edge of the road here. 
So that goes to there, and then and now it goes to there. And you want to be very, very, very accurate. I, I wasn't too accurate on this one. Uh, it sounds like I've got a cricket in my roof. And you go like that until you've got the whole boundary selected. I won't do it now because it'll take up too much time in the video. Um, I'll just do this to be on the easy side. Right. <laughs> so that's basically what I've uh, I've done with my photo reel. And you can see I've followed the road there and I've followed where I want it to be green. Now anything outside of this, I'll show you how this layer is made using this layer. And you want to select inverse. This is actually selecting inside. You want to select outside. And then on the main one, once you've done your, where well, you've got, there's a bit of a blemish there, but that, oh, that, that's all right. It's just a cul-de-sac. And then you just go copy paste, and that'll give you a new layer. So you get rid of the background, and you can see that's that's basically what you want to get. And with this one, you want that to be 50% opaque. So what you end up with is something like that. Then you take out the bits that you want to keep normal. So if you bring in the background, you then just get your eraser tool of a reasonable size. I'll turn that on. Of a reasonable size. And you just erase this area, right? So you can see it's going gray there. And you just erase this area that you don't want. And you want to be reasonably accurate with that. And you go through your town and there's a shed there, so you just do this. And the eraser is about 50%. And you might want to do, you know, get rid of this. Just make that back to normal. Same with this one here. You might want to just make the boundaries on that back to normal. Just something like that, right? And that's what you do with your scenery. Now, that's basically how you make your scenery. I'll delete that layer because I don't need it. And then you end up with, you can see the colouring there, that's spring. You make, a, you make a copy of that, you change the colour slightly, you match it to a flight simulator. Uh, make yourself some little swatches, I'll show you what I mean by a swatch. You just go into flight simulator, uh, depending on what scenery you're using, you might have Orbix or some other scenery in the background and you want it to be matched to that. So you want to get a little swatch, um, I'll just open one up here, you just take a little square out of flight simulator um, I'll open this one up I'll show you what I mean so that's basically what I took out of flight simulator you just go all copy and you put this down here like that and this one I think I called spring so we turn spring on and then see you go around and you just match it to this as close as you can you can see it's still a slightly greener it probably needs a little bit more contrast so what you would do on this one is give it a, you can see it here oops I'll undo that and you move it to there and you might give your background a little bit more contrast right so you just go up to your image and your brightness and contrast and you want to make sure this is roughly the same so and you can see it's almost fading out here. So 36 is all right, you do that. Okay, you go back to your swatch, you move it around a little bit, and you just do that until it's color matched. Obviously, it's not gonna be the same everywhere, but you wanna get the majority right. So you can see all these dark patches, and you wanna sort of match it to these dark patches. And you can see that's roughly right. So you keep that as your green. And then you do one for summertime, you do one for spring, uh, sorry, for winter, and you do one for fall as well. And you can see it's, it's, it's color matched pretty good, right? And then once you don't need it, you delete it. You delete that layer. So that becomes your, your coloring. And then I've got fall there, I've got my winter there, all various different colors. Summer is slightly darker. I've got all my numbering in there, I've put all my lines in, you can see all the lines appearing here, just like that. And also with the lines you'll find that some of these trees have vanished as well. My concrete's been put in, all my car, car parks have been done, my scenery's done, and you can see that's how it changes on the background. So that's basically it for Photoreal. Now, time, well, 
as I build my buildings and I place my buildings, I then go back to the photo, photo reel here and then I might remove the building. So currently I'm making all these uh, living quarters in here and you can see I've taken away a lot of the buildings because the buildings will cover it. And you can say I've taken that away and I've taken this away and I've put the road back in. And I've just gone through that process of removing stuff. So when, I, when all these buildings are in, in place, I'll come back in here and I'll get rid of those trees, I'll get rid of those trees and I'll put in my own trees. So once you then save this, so you would have all of these on top of your scenery, there's your spring there, and then you just want to compress all of these to one layer. There's the layer there. So this is the one we're saving, as you see there. And then you just save that as a BMP file. And you want that as spring, right? So you just put that under as SP spring, and then you hit save. I don't want to save it because I, this one is it's pretty close and I did move the background. I don't know if that's changed it. Once you've saved it, you then undo your, your merge, undo that, then select fall, select fall there, merge that, and then you save that as fall. And then you do all your four seasons. And if you've got hard winter, if you've got a snow area, you might have hard winter and you'll save hard winter as well. And then you do your night as well. I generally do the night without any background. And you do your night as well. And then you do your blend, there's your blend there. Any in a blend, anything that's black is gone, it's in it's invisible. Okay? And with a water layer, anything that's white is visible, anything that's black is water. So that's how it works with the water layers. Okay? So these ones are invisible and then the water layer will put in water where those blips are. So that's how your blends work. And that's basically it with Photoshop, photo reel. Once you've done your photo reel and you've saved it, and you, you've got it all compiled, I'm not gonna save that. Uh, you then bring it in to here and your program's already made an INI &I file. I've got many down here. So you'll have a setup information which will just look like this. It'll say photo one, photo two, photo three. So photo two and you'll have something like this. That's your photo reel. You can call it anything you like, but I keep it the same. That's your photo reel. The first thing you want to do is get rid of this null value because uh, if you compile it with S Builder, you can't get rid of the null value, right? This is all your latitude and longitude here, your sampling method. Your variation, that's your seasons. So you might want to put in summertime in Australia, that's December, January, February is summertime. So you would put in December, January, February, and you have to write those words in full. And that then, you then change this and you make that summer, right? So you put in your summer seasons, as I said, December, January, February, you type them in there. Now you might want to go to the next layer and all you do is just basically make a cup of room and then you go down here and you call this one full and then you put in, you know, in, in our case, our autumn layers Right, and then you go down here, oops. And you put the next one in, and this one will become spring. Okay, and you keep going that until you've got all your layers. So I've got a night layer, that's night, just underscore night, uh, BMP. You've then got a water layer. Now you want the water layer to be below the blend. So it compiles the blend first, then the water layer. Uh, you can swap them around, but I find if you have the water layer above the blend, it works out better. You give it a name in here. Uh, and you actually have to change the heading as well and tell it how many source images there are. Now, rather than going through that process, I'll just open one, which is that particular one that I had open. You can see up the top, you want to have type multi-source and you want to have, in the case of this image, you've got seven images. So you've got summer, spring, fall, winter, that's four. Night, that's the fifth one. You blend and your water layer. So five, six, and seven. And then in this case, what the photo reel is going to be called and although it says .inf, um, it'll basically be .bgl. Once you've done this file and you've created this file, and I'll leave the heading open because that's gonna be handy, and you can see December, January, February is summertime, 
September, October, November, that's spring, March, April, May, you put all your seasons in, you get rid of that blend mask. Once you've done this, you make sure you've got resample in the same folder as where this is. Okay, I'm lucky because it starts with RAF and a resample. So I've got the SDK version of Prepared 3D version 4, which I downloaded from Lockheed Martin. They've also got the version 3 and below one as well, and Flight Simulator 10. Once you've got you, uh, once you've got this created, and you know it's all right, all you do is you drag it and drop it onto that, and there it is. So it's now assembling it. It will take time. Um, I would experiment just doing your main background first. So I won't allow this to happen because this is now overwritten the one I had saved up to top, date modified, and that's the file it creates. You can see 75 kilobytes, I didn't complete it. Oops, I won't rename it, I'll just delete it, right? So you recompile it, and you can see these are all the files. There's the blend, there's the water, okay? Always does this, I don't know why it does this. Ah, uh, that's better. So you can see that's the last one I did, okay? So you've got your multi-source of seven, so you've got your, your five basic images, and then you've got your, your blend and your water layers, which are TIFFs. You've got to make sure the blend and the water layer are TIFFs. Any, everything else is BMP, okay? And that's it, that's, that's all there really is to uh, making photo reel. Um, I'll open up, I'll pause the video now, I'll open up Flight Simulator and I'll show you what uh, this scenery looks like in Flight Simulator. Okay, Dougie, I'm back. Uh, here we have, uh, we're in Flight Simulator, and you can see the concrete doesn't come out as you would expect. It's not as clear as it is in um, Photoshop, and that's what you're hoping for. As long as it looks reasonably good from the air, you can see the numbering that's down there, and the AFCAD that controls the lines. Uh, your numbering, you can see those numbers are quite clear. Those numbers, actually they're quite large, so I think they're about 10 foot square, so they are, are a big number. Uh, all your dirt marks are controlled by the AFCAD, so wherever a plane parks, the dirt is put in by the AFCAD, which is not a frame hog. You can see that I'm getting, what am I getting here, 24, 25 frames, it varies. I'm asking for 40, but I'm getting 23, 24 frames. When you go over to scenery that's well, generally you, you would think you would lose frames if you go to trees and buildings, but you can see I'm, I'm not really losing that much. The reason it's slower over here is because there are two other major airports. My Williamstown Airport, which is quite involved, as if you've downloaded some of my scenery, you know what Williamstown's like. And way over in the distance I've got Sydney which is about 40 nautical miles as in this direction um, and uh, I'm not too sure what scenery I'm using there I, I think I've got a pay where one there so that's quite involved quite intense uh, you can see there's a lot of things involved here you've got all your buildings which um, I actually created all of those myself um, so I know I, I'm using the Google Earth image to get myself what the dimensions of the building look like and then from the shadow I work out what height it is and so on. Um, AI aircraft, it's just normal AI aircraft package. Uh, little airplane 11 down there. It used to be a 787 park down, down there. And you can see where I've got um, the ground has been taken out. I've got a little bridgeway here so the road goes down, goes under that bridge there. So you, you've got um, a CVX controlling that so it goes under the bridge and comes out the other side and levels out and all your VOR down there and so forth so this is what the photo reel actually looks like when it's inside the sim looking in F12 I'll get rid of the aircraft looking in the sim um, I'll just zoom out a bit I'll try you can see the color matching is pretty close you know you probably could work on that a little bit more and get that more closer um, I think I'm using Orbix in the background I'm not too sure I can't be sure um, uh, it got installed over a year ago now 
Um, and yeah, if you wanted to colour match that a little better, uh, you can, but you're not going to be flying like this. You're going to be flying basically in uh, your F9 position. So I'll just, I'll go backwards and I'll show you what that looks like. And I'll go around to where the approach is. I've got a couple of lights down there that actually positions you in the middle of the, the runway. Uh, during the day and at night they all illuminate. Get rid of the mouse. So you can see looking like that, you really can't see the boundary between my photo reel. Well, you can if you look close enough. I, I know what I'm looking for, so I can. But you really can't see it. So for me, that's fine. You know, I'm not going to I'm not going to bother with trying to match it any better than that. And then uh, you've got your airport. You can see I'm way too close here. I'll go back to where the Pappy lights say I'm normal. About there. I'll just go over here, just slewing around. You can see I'm roughly too low there, but that's right. So you can see the scenery is, I mean, can you see a difference? I can't see a difference. Not from this distance. As you get closer, you probably will. And then you can see you've got your city down there. So if you want to go through the process of actually, I'll get rid of the cockpit. If you want to go through the process of actually making this um, match the background, that's up to you. I don't bother so much about that. I'm more worried or more, I'm more concerned about the actual airport, how the airport looks, how the airport comes up. But that's how the photo reel comes up. You can see it looks quite good down there. Um, and then you start putting in all your models. You might want to use default models if you can. That's entirely up to you. Um, I actually make all my own models. So, and it's basically guesswork. You just go on on Google and then you just do some Google searching uh, for anything relating to Richmond and you might download you know a manual that's let's say a Richmond service manual or something like that of an aircraft and it might just have one photo in there of part of a building which is how I found a lot of these go on YouTube watch a couple of videos and then you say oh that's what that looks like or you might want to use Google Maps go to ground level or Google Earth go to ground level and see if you can see any part of the building um, and then you make and then from those three or many sources uh, you then make the building what you think it looks like and it's if it's close enough it's close enough you know um, but to give you an idea to get it to this level and I only do it part-time on the weekends and so forth and if I've got an RDO or uh, annual leave um, I'll put a little bit of time into it and then you make your airport and then the airport builds over time so in the case of this there is no apart from the AFCAD there is no image over image over image over image all the lines are done by the AFCAD all the lights are done by the AFCAD um, lights along the runway are actually effects that I've put in but you only only see that at night uh, the numbers you know I've done that in the photo reel the numbers were illuminated at night the scenery is illuminated at night, all done by the photo reel, and that's how you should do it. That's how you should approach it. So I'm, I'm going to leave an idea of how photo reel is made. Uh, if you have questions, ask me in the comments. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. Um, share the video around, show all your friends and family and so forth. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll go from that. Anyway, Flood Sim Dev, I'm signing off for now, and I'll catch you on it.